and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the Synology RS820 Plus. It's the latest rack mount to join their series of affordable mid-range rack mount devices, part of the rack station series. Now this device arrives at about 700 quid, give or take, without the hard drive SSD media or with the VAT included. So wherever you're going to buy in your part of the world, wherever where it is that you buy it, no indications there that you should buy from anyone in particular, it's going to cost you somewhere around 700 quid without the VAT. So, is this device worth your data? That is the big question we want to talk about, because I could focus on the software a great deal, but I have talked about Synology's DSM software, particularly DSM 6.2, quite a lot. And I can tell you right now that the great operating system and the great user interface that it does give you, that GUI, is fully available on this, with almost all of Synology's myriad of applications being supported on the RS820. So in terms of software, you are gonna get a lot from this. Don't get me wrong, you, although it does do um, a great job of things like virtualization, large scale backups and run active backup sync and surveillance station exceptionally well, things like 4K playback and Plex Media Server are just not going to be viable on this. This, tar this device's target audience does not really aim at media enjoyers, you know, media viewers and people that go for one of these devices in order to enjoy their data at home. This has business in mind. In fact, that is why it's a rack mount device. In previous videos, we have talked about how rack mount devices are, you know, whenever you have the same hardware inside one of these as you find in a desktop device, there always seems to be the business tax. Rack mounts arriving somewhere between 10 to 20% more expensive overall than their desktop um, alternates. So in the case of this, that 700 quid may seem exceptionally high for the specs that we're gonna talk about. I've mentioned the specs several times, but let's go through them. It arrives with a quad-core Intel Atom-based CPU, the C3538, it's a 2.1 gigahertz quad-core processor, and the device also arrives with two gig of DDR4 memory that can be expanded up to 18 gig. Now, that was one of the first things where alarms went off for me, because I do respect the Synology brand. I've talked about it on the channel a great deal of time, but 18 gig is a strange number. Um, now, the CPU, I'm prepared to forgive. I know a number of you, and definitely people in the comments after this video, will no doubt comment on the fact that that CPU choice, that Atom or Deviton CPU, depending on the pronunciation, um, is not exactly the newest processor. It's still a great CPU for NAS, being powerful yet efficient at the same time. It's still an x86, 64-bit architecture chip from Intel, but it's still a little long in the tooth as far as CPUs go. But at this price point for a four bay one U rack mount solution, it's still not too shabby. But that memory was something that really stuck with me because I was kind of, 18 gig is a strange number. It'd be one thing if there was such a thing as a nine gig stick of memory, but it isn't the case. This device arrives and I'll show you in a moment with two gig of memory soldered on board and an empty slot where you can install up to one 16 gig memory, a SODIMM memory uh, module. Now, non-paired memory is always a slight worry. I mean, again, I'm sure it's absolutely fine and Synology would not have included that kind of memory on a device like this without testing it thoroughly first. But every part of my IT bones has always been when it comes to memory to pair memory together. Four and four, eight and eight, 16 and 16, so on and so forth. And the idea that I would put a two gig and an 18 gig stick inside one device, I find very, very peculiar indeed. But I won't harass them too much for that. But for me personally, ooh, weird. But other than that, in terms of hardware architecture, this is still a fairly impressive device. It's got metal trays built into the front there that support up to the very latest 16 TB hard drives. And again, metal chassis design, metal tray design with two and a half inch and three and a half inch holes for that hard drive and SSD media inside. Supporting the very latest Seagate Ironwolf hard drives, as well as Seagate Ironwolf SSDs. We are seeing a lot of movement in um, NAS-based media in 2019, and things are getting very aggressive, which is great for you, the consumer, because you can get a hell of a bargain. We've got LEDs built into the top of the device, giving us real-time information about um, access, network activity, and system health, which is always a bonus, and the trays themselves are lockable with the whole device even having an accessory box, which allows you to attach little handles down to the front of the device, 
So if you are going to use a sliding um, sliding rack mount rails, you can take advantage of that there. You've got screws for those rails. You've got screws for the hard drives and SSD media and a power connector as well, along with keys for those trays. Now, it's worth highlighting this single plug here because this device also arrives in a redundant power supplier version. That is a device that's got two PSUs built into the rear of it. And in the event of one of your power supplies failing, the other device makes sure, the other PSU ensures that this device maintains itself and continues running there in the background, alerting admins that a PSU has failed. This, however, is not the redundant power supply version and it is a single power connector. Now, when I'm talking about hardware on this 1U rack mount, 19 inch uh, rack mount NAS, we should really take a moment to talk about the ports and connections. If I bring that closer to the camera, as you can see there at the bottom, this side here, we have got that eSATA connection there, which allows us to expand the RS820 from four bays to a total of eight bays with the RX418. That uh, expansion device retails for about four or 500 quid and is non-RAID enabled. You do have to use the CPU in this NAS to handle the RAID across this and the expansion device, which I know a number of you will be less keen on. Also, we've got USB ports here. They'll allow you to add expandable storage, um, supported USB devices uh, for connecting UPSs, and there's even a few wireless dongles and more. But again, USB ports on a rack mount NAS, very rarely useful, particularly on a Synology. It doesn't really take advantage of that. Maybe you disagree, let me know in the comments. Now, if we go to the middle, we can see those four LAN ports there. This device supports link aggregation, which means that with the support of a lag supported switch or port trunk supporting switch, you can then go up to four gigabit ethernet connectivity between you and this device. But it's worth remembering that really link aggregation in a business is at its most useful when you're connecting these four LAN ports to a single switch that supports link aggregation, they're therefore making sure that all connected users get the maximum amount of bandwidth between them and the NAS. If you connected this via one LAN port to a switch and then had four different users accessing it, they are all gonna share that one gigabit connection. So always take advantage of lag where you can. Now, the blue port in the middle is a comms port. It's not VGA or a parallel. It is designed to connect this device to your existing maintenance system for configuration. You can't really transmit data and it does not work as a visual interface. But by far the most important and I would say interesting part of this device is here. This PCIe Express slot here. This allows us to attach 10 gigabit ethernet 20, um, 25 gigabit ethernet or even supported 40 gigabit cards although some of those Melanex cards will not be supported by this device on top of that you can attach SSD cache cards like the M2 D17 and M2 D18 this allows you to install two M2 or two NVMe M2 SSDs to enable caching in this device and therefore create an enormous amount of internal speed which you can then output accordingly however Currently, there is only the option to have M2 SSD caching on a PCIe card or 10 GBE. It won't be till next year with the release of the Synology E10, um, E10 M20 T1 card, which is a joint 10 GBE and NVMe cache card. So again, if you do buy this device, keep an eye out for that card later on. It will help you remove the bottleneck from the inside and the outside of your hardware. But overall, this is what I would expect for a rack mount 1U NAS and particularly part of the flagship plus series from Synology. Its design is rugged, it's very well put together and if we remove this lid, I already removed the screws prior to this video, if I remove the top of the chassis we can take a good look at the inside of this device. Now we bring that up there and I'll try and get on the mic still, we can take a look inside. Now I'll try and get the light right you may notice straight away, going back to my earlier point, this memory slot here. Now, this is, again, something I find deeply disappointing. This memory slot being um, a single slot means that either under this heatsink, which I doubt, or on the other side of this controller board is that 2 gig memory module. And this is where we can install a 2 gig, a 4 gig, an 8 gig, or a 16 gig SODIMM DDR4 module. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to be able to expand, but that's still a weird way to have done it. And I don't know why they changed it from the way they did it on the RS818 previously. 
On top of that, we've got that heatsink covering that PSC, uh, the CPU that's inside, that Atom, which again, combined with the um, passive and active airflow systems working throughout this device, means that you will get great internal core temperatures which will ensure this device works very, very well and efficiently as possible. As far as 1U rack mounts go, this is still a very impressive device. Although not quite part of the 2020 series um, that we were really, really, really hoping Synology would reveal to us now at the end of the year, it's still a welcome addition. And if you are looking for an affordable 4U, uh, 1U 4-bay rack mount solution, this is probably one of the best things out there from Synology. However, if you do feel... feel you're slightly underwhelmed by it, then I thoroughly recommend you check out the RS1619XS Plus because that is a rack mount that just keeps on giving. And I do recommend you check out my video on that. It pro hopefully has been recommended on the side, otherwise do check it out. But this has been my hardware review of the RS820. I'm not going to say it's my favourite NAS I've ever looked at. That would be an absolute lie. But what I will tell you is right now, in terms of Synology's own portfolio, if you're looking for that one U with four bays of storage, which with hard drives as big as 16 TB these days, means that you are going to get a serious amount of storage from this four bay. And going for a 700 quid rack mount frees up a lot of your budget to go directly into the hard drive media, a PCIe upgrade card, or a combination of 10 GBE SSD cache to give you that incredible workflow, <coughs> which that CPU will give you. So do check that out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.